Hi, this is Mark Gaylor, Adobe Photoshop Ambassador for the Asia-Pacific region here. And we're going to discuss or uh, feature my top 20 all-time favorite uh, tips and techniques for when working in Photoshop CC. Okay, so for top tip uh, number 10, we're halfway through my uh, top 20. And uh, this is going to be an oldie, but a goodie. This is uh, free transform. Now we've got some uh, converging verticals here. Uh, we can correct them in programs such as ACR uh, or Lightroom. We're using lens corrections, but I'm just going to show you that occasionally uh, free transform inside of the main Photoshop CC working space is a quite a sophisticated tool. Okay, so let's take a look at that. I've got my background layer here and I'm just going to duplicate that. Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC. Um, and then we're going to go into free transform. Now you will find this from the main menus, but uh, this is uh, because it's a very powerful and frequently used tool. Uh, you might as well learn the keyboard shortcut for this, which is Command T for transform, Control T on a PC, and that brings up the uh, the bounding box, uh, which is the um, the the, the uh, shows you the corner handles that we can interact with to change uh, the size and scale um, of this uh, layer. Now, now occasionally when you activate uh, this. Um, tool uh, or feature, uh, you may be zoomed in and not be able to see the bounding box uh, even though it's active. So again, just Command-0 or Control-0 will fit on screen and show you the bounding box there. Okay, so let's uh, uh, go in and uh, adjust this. Now if we go up to the um, uh, the edit menu we can see that there are many transform options here now um, you don't need to come up to the main menu to access these for instance we could just right click uh, and access them from this uh, context menu but uh, we don't even need to do that because if we just hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key on the PC you can see that we can adjust each of these bounding box handles independently. Now I'm just going to leave that back there because I'm going to move this out or, um, and correct the keystoning of this image. I'm just going to do command minus or control minus a couple of times, maybe not that much. Okay, and um, now holding down that command key, I can drag that uh, so we can get um, uh, those uh, verticals on the right hand um, edge of this image uh, to line up. Okay, and again on the same on the left hand side, we can get a good alignment uh, of those uh, verticals. Now we might need to go back to that left edge, or sorry, the right edge one more time uh, to make that perfect. And uh, what can often happen inside uh, when we're keystoning an image, uh, an image can look a little bit, uh, or the, uh, the height of objects after we've transformed can look a little bit shorter than they would naturally appear. So we can just uh, grab that and just erase that uh, to return the original or uh, visual height uh, to this image. Okay, now um, we're not not content or to commit that. Uh, there are a couple of other features that we can do with this, and that is is to come up to the options bar and just uh, click on the um, uh, warp mode for this. Uh, this gives you a lot of a degree of flexibility. For instance, if you've got uh, a little bit of barrel distortion or pin cushion distortion, uh, we can then control that um, by using these uh, sort of vector handles uh, on the the edge here, you can just come directly into this and then start warping and weaving this image into perfect shape. Okay, so this is a great little feature. You could even create a little page curl there just by dragging that over on itself uh, in order to create this uh, effect which reveals the layer underneath. Okay, so I'll just commit that. That's not exactly what I was going to show, but you can see now the underlying layer. If I wanted to put a little bit of a drop shadow, we're going a little bit of off tangent here. I could just uh, click on the drop shadow dialog and uh, just pull that into place there and commit OK. So I've got a little bit of a drop shadow. Okay, so great. That's um, a good way of applying free transform. You could apply all of those adjustments um, 
non-destructively if you were work, wanting to work that way uh, I'll just uh, do a command Z, Z or control Z to step back a command option Z uh, to step back again if I applied all of those adjustments uh, to this as a smart object convert to smart object and then did a free transform uh, you can see that all of these adjustments would be non-destructive adjustments okay so those are for people who uh, don't like to work destructively we can apply all of those adjustments uh, as if they're a smart object so um, it nothing uh, appears it's not like a smart filter or anything but if we go back into the free transform dialog you can see that it's not permanently uh, being applied to those pixels so we can readjust at any time okay so I'll just uh, commit that and uh, that um, that finishes uh, top tip number 10